Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard. Today we're going to be talking about the updated version for Crossover Dress with Bower of Arena. There's a lot going on with this deck with Counterblast for sure, but I kind of want to show off my version of the way that I built up this deck and what I'm comfortable with for playing around with it. So let's just jump right into it. So we're going to start off with our ride line. This is the Crossover Dress ride line. So we have our Sunrise Egg because of the aesthetic, and then our Grade 1 Reno. This is the one where if uh, uh, Snuggling Rayu, or Rayu rides on top of her, you can search out a Trick Star. And then Rayu's skill is when you ride Nirvana Java on top of her, you look at the top seven, look for a Prayer Dragon, add it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck. Uh, they both have regret skills if you decide to run main copies of them in the deck. Uh, they both get 5k when they're in the same column as a Prayer Dragon, but you know, if, if you throw a booster behind this, that can come in handy, you know, if you're running in the main deck. This being a booster could help, but uh, we're just sticking with our Virenas and Prayer Dragons for our main deck, so. Main deck, starting off with our three copies of Nirvana Java for our main deck, so we have the full four. What it does is act once per turn, you can discard a card from your hand and grab a Prayer Dragon and a Trick Star from your drop, so you call two things. The second skill is when this attacks, you count plus one, choose a crossover dress, uh, a unit in the crossover dress state and stand it. Unlike OG Nirvana, where you can, uh, you know, just give power even if it's in the state or not, this one does require it to be in the crossover dress state. Would be nice if you just restand any rear guard, but you know, here we are. Being able to restand rear guards and multi-attack in a dragon themed deck is pretty cool. Now going into our New grade three, this is Bower of Irina. So this is from DBT07. It's a brand new card, brand new crossover dress unit. So what it does is when it's in the crossover dress state, you can Soul Blast two, retire an opponent's rear guard. That's act and not once per turn. So you can do as much as you want. Second skill is this unit gets 2K for each of your opponent's open rear guard circles while this is in the crossover dress state. When it attacks, you can kind of blast one to have it lose a drive check and then gain the ability to perform drive check. So it's single drive when it swings for counter blast one if your opponent has one or less rear guards. Um, counter blast one is a lot for this deck until we get some decent counter charge engine for the most part, but it's still really cool to be able to blow up your opponent's board. So I do like that soul blast two to just retire something, which is nice. And I do like that it does gain power for free. So being able to, if your opponent's board is empty, it's just a 23K body by itself. And it does have the potential for drive checks, which is nice. So then moving on to our other grade three, we're running two copies of Bram Virena. So this one, if it's in the crossover dress state, it gains 10K. And if your opponent's Vanguard is at grade three or greater, this gets another 10K. So it's a 33 by itself. So decent body. Second skill is when this unit attack hits a Vanguard, you can, in this in the crossover dress state, you can Soul Blast one, choose one, choose one of your circles or retire all your opponent's rear guards in that same column. This lets you blow up a lot of stuff when it hits and it has really big power for 33. So I do like that you can guarantee the retire with Bower. So that's why I'm running this more of this one, but I'd still like the brand Virena as a beat stick. So that's why I'm kind of working with this ratio. So that's it for our grade threes. Moving on to grade twos, starting off with three copies of Jeweled Sore equipped Garu Virena. This is Still probably one of the best uh, crossover dress units in the whole deck. What it does is continuous that this is in crossover dress. This unit gets 10K. When, during the battle when this attacks, when your opponent would call units to the guard circle, they must call two at a time from their hand, being able to kind of battle door your way to victory. And then Nirvana lets you restand, so you can restand with this and swing again, which is nice. So if it has a crits on it, makes it a little bit deadly. Yeah, so it's just cool that it's a continuous effect as well. Then I'm running one copy of Vils Virena. This is the one where when you perform crossover dress with this unit on when you place it, you can search your drop zone for another unit with a different name that has crossover dress in its abilities, add it back to your hand. The second skill is continuous. Uh, if this is in crossover dress, you can get 5K and plus 10 shield. So, the, and your opponent can't target it. So they can't imprison it, they can't retire it. And it's just a 15K shield interceptor. Uh, I might bump it up more, uh, but for now I'm running the one just for space reasons. It's kind of iffy when you're playing around with your prayer dragons and your Virenas, just trying to make it all balanced. But I am running two copies of Arcs. This is a regular overdress unit. So what Arcs does is when you perform overdress over Trickstar, you kind of blast one, draw two cards, this gets 5K. I like this card a lot because it, you want to draw a lot of hand with this deck, just kind of search for your targets. You can get it off really easily. You don't get to restand it with, you know, Nirvana Java, but being able to get some hand off uh, just with the Trickstars are, is pretty helpful. 
So we're working with the, the two arcs right now. And evidently it looks like crossover dress and overdress are gonna be getting some combined support, kinda it looks like. So maybe there's some benefit in running arcs in your crossover dress deck. So those were our uh, overdress units, I'll just say. And then we're gonna go into our prayer dragons, starting off with three copies of, uh, what is your name? Ubargo. Umbargo. So what Ubargo does is when this unit becomes an original dress or gets combined because of crossover dress, you can counter blast one, two, and then soul charge one and choose from your opponent's regards and retire it. So again, a lot of counter blasting going on in this deck. So, but the reason I'm running is because again, I'm kind of going for more of the uh, field control, board control variant of this deck, just being able to retire units that they're kind of bothering me and my opponent's board. So, and it fills soul for Bower of Irina. So it is helpful and it is a prayer dragon. Then we are running for now, pretty much the best staple for prayer dragon targets. It is uh, Gallandite. So what Gallandite does is when this becomes an original dress for the turn, that unit gets 5K. And if it's uh, Garu of Irina specifically, it gets another 5K. Anytime you cross over a dress, it gets 5K for the turn. And that might be helpful when you're restanding it. Uh, but especially because you're with Garu of Irina, making a 30K beater is pretty nice. It does suck that it's until end of turn, but you know, what are you really gonna do? <laughs> so that's it for those. And then going into my one grade one prayer dragon. I am running only this at one just because I really don't like the discard. <laughs> so what it does is when it becomes an original dress, you kind of lost one, draw two, then choose a card from your hand, discard it. I really don't know why we had to discard, but you know, we do. So I'm just not really a fan. I basically ended up dropping these for the Virena arcs because I just wanted to be able to draw more hand. And this wasn't doing as much good of a job as I wanted it to. And I know I can just run more Vils Virenas just to kind of mitigate that and add cards back to my hand. But I'm, I'm testing out the deck and I'm liking how it is so far and the fact that you can kind of keep recycling Prayer Dragons. This can come up multiple times. So this is working out fine for me so far. And then next, three copies of PGs. So we're doing the Twin Bucklers and the one copy of Elementarius Sanctitude. Pile Bunker, uh, or sorry, Twin Bunker, <laughs> buddy fight reference, um, is your, if you have two or more in hand, you have to discard. If you have one or less, you do not have to discard. So these PGs are always good. And then Sanctitude is if your opponent has a Vanguard with the triple drive in its card ability, you don't have to pay the cost, so it gets over grade fours. Uh, the second skill is you can play this card by discarding a card from your hand, and if your current Vanguard's grade three, uh, you put this into the order zone, it's a Blitz order, discard one, it's a PG. So this gets around Guard Restrict with Flag Bird, so that's also really nice. So being able to run this uh, does help a lot. You can only run one in the deck, so we're running the one. Sanctitude is good. Last but not least, the four trick star. So trick star is the kind of like the bread and butter of the deck. So you overdress with it, you search it out, and it's kind of like your main target for evolving all of your units. Uh, it does have a skill. It can't be chosen by your opponent's card abilities. So that can be helpful if you just want to keep it out as a booster. Protagonist card. Starting up, Drag Veda. Drag Veda is our OT. Its additional effect is you can restand your Vanguard. So after your Vanguard swings, you can restand it. So uh, that means you can do Java's ability more than once if you want to restand again to get even more attacks off. Um, but a restanding Vanguard's always nice. You know, Twin Drive and Hundo Mill. Then I'm running for the skill crit. Um, we do use Soul in this deck, but you know, how often do we really intentionally call our triggers? Uh, at the end of the battle, this boost, you move to soul, give another unit 2k. So trigger with the skill does help sometimes. And then I'm running another four of the vanilla crit from the trial deck, so, or from the uh, OG Nirvana trial deck. So kind of kind of keeping the aesthetic rolling along. So then moving on to our other triggers, I am running fronts now. I was running draws before. Um, I, I'm liking the fronts. I like being able to have extra power to the front row. This deck kind of needs power for the most part when you're pushing for those turns. Think that the draw triggers can be good, especially because you want to draw into your key pieces for when you're overdressing. Uh, the fronts work fine as well. And then last but not least, we're doing our two vanilla heals and our two skill heals. So this is a uh, trial deck art again. And this is the skill heal where when your opponent's unit gains a crit other than through a trigger effect. So like Barrow Magnes, Gravidia, Babzarga, depending on circumstances of how they gain their crits, Stoic can do it as well. Uh, 
or even in Bruce decks. So there's a lot of there's a lot of decks in standard that gain crits, not just from triggers. So this heal has a lot of um, it's a lot of uses, say the least. So what it does is when your opponent's unit gains an extra crit, not by a card ability or or through a card ability, not by a trigger effect, it gains 15 shield. So running two of that just to kind of keep some more shield for certain circumstances. It's not a necessity. You can totally get away with the regular heals. Um, I'm just kind of testing these out since I have them, but uh, they, they come in handy every now and then, so it doesn't hurt. All right, that was it for the deck profile. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching. And uh, we already got some games of this up at the moment, I believe. So, um, but I'm looking forward to see how the support improves with set nine and 10, you know, just to kind of see where we're going with the crossover dress. So looking forward to that. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next one.